KOR Water Sports here with the legendary Bob Arum. Tell us, man, I, I love this car. This kind of goes to the throwback of, of top rank putting on their own cards, and they were always juicy from the first fight to the to the last fight. Uh, let's start with the with the first fight. I'm assuming it was the first fight. Of course, Stevenson's pro debut. Correct. Um, what was what were the negotiations like to try to get him in? I know he was kind of fielding offers from different people. What what kind of sealed the deal for you guys? Well, once he had his management in place with. Uh, uh, James Prince and Andre Ward, uh, they wanted to come with us because they knew what we could do with a new fighter. And uh, so it was quite easy. I never negotiated with Shakur. They brought him to the office and we realized what a good, you know, what a good place it was, top rank was for him. So it was very pleasant and we we're all on the same page making a big fight for him. Obviously, you have uh, Mike Conlon fighting uh, the week after, or, or I mean, I'm sorry, in, in two weeks from now. Uh, tell us, that, are they kind of on a, a, I mean, obviously, they're both thinking their pro debut, but is this already kind of the beginning of a, of a collision course to them uh, in the future, do you think? My plan is for them, for us to do a fight between them in four or five years where it would be like a Leonard Hearns fight. Definitely. Uh, Jesse Magdaleno's on the card, one of your newest champions, making his first uh, first uh, defense of the title. T to tell us about his fight and how, how do you expect that to go? Well, he's in with a tough Brazilian who's really good, so it's a good fight. And uh, Jesse is now serious about boxing, and he's got a lot of talent. We knew that when we signed him in the beginning. Is that the biggest difference you feel like that now that he's with uh, Manny Robles? You feel you see a big difference from Jesse? Uh, like night and day. Yeah, uh, Oscar Valdez is headlining, correct? Yeah, he's making his. Is that a mandatory? I believe. Yes. Yeah. Tell us. Uh, I mean, his his future. I I don't know if you have a a, a a fighters that young with that brighter future, right? Well, he's one of the big stars, and he's a crossover. You know, he's. Uh, yeah, he, he speaks English and uh, Spanish fluently and well, so he reminds me a lot of the young Oscar De La Hoya. Zudo Ramirez obviously on the card as well, the biggest guy on the card, uh, fighting at super middleweight. That, that division is getting a little interesting now with uh, obviously Chavez and, and uh, Canelo, who knows if they stay there, but uh, what, what do you see next for him? Obviously the, 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 he's well, in a tough fight. He's fight in July, I don't know who the opponent and where, and then hopefully uh, Triple G will be available and fight Triple G. And lastly, uh, Canelo Chavez is in May. They are fighting at the super, weight, super middleweight division. Do you see that as, uh, as Zudlo's like a possible next opponent for him? Do you think that's, that's possible to make that, that matchup with the winner of that fight? Well, we'll see. I don't know. If Canelo wins, you know, Oscar's not going to risk Canelo with a Ramirez or with or with Triple G. If Chavez wins, yeah, Chavez and 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 Ramirez could be a hell of a fight. How, how do you see that fight, Canelo and Chavez going? It depends on Chavez. If Chavez trains hard, listens to Nacho, listens to Memo, gets himself in shape, he has a chance. But if he's the old Chavez, that trains for a week and takes off for a week, uh, he's going to get beaten, beat bad. Definitely. Everyone, April 22nd, buy top-ranked pay-per-view. Thank you so much, Bob, for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you.